Microsoft Access is what they call a relational database and that is it's not a flat file database. It is um, a, an option, a possibility in Access to create relationships between these tables so that you can pull information from the different tables together in a single answer. Let's have a look at the relationship side of Access. I'm going to close this TBL call table. Now to see the relationships window we basically go to database tools and we choose the button relationships and this defines how data in the tables is related such as ID fields or name fields in different tables. So I'm going to hit the relationships button. Straight away I see two tables. Um, I really need to see all three so I'm going to click the show table button and ask to see the employee table as well because that's the one missing from the mix and add and close. So now I'm seeing three tables. Now if you have any relationships, you possibly have two, I've got one, click the relationship, it goes dark, and either right click and delete it or just hit the delete button or key on your keyboard. When I hit the delete key on my keyboard and go yes, I've created, a broken the relationship. Now I want to arrange these tables and size these tables in a way that clearly defines the relationships that exist. So I want the call table to be at the top, I want to stretch it so the vertical scroll bar disappears and I can see everything in that table. So this call table contains these fields and this field here is the primary key field that uniquely identifies each call. Um, I'll have employee over here so you can move them by their names. And I'll put employee over here and I'll stretch it again until the scroll bar disappears. There it is there. This is the employee table. It's got all the fields listed here and this is the field that's a primary key that uniquely identifies each employee. Then I'll move this table and stretch this table and maybe just make it the same size as employee for aesthetic reasons. This is the customers table. These are the fields that we have in the table and this is the primary key field. So you can show tables, you can easily cl click um, a table like TBL call and press the delete key and get rid of it and easily hit the show table button and bring it back and then just position it and move it again and size it. So you can delete and you can show. I now want to create the relationships. Um, one customer can potentially in this system place many calls. So there is a relationship between customers and calls. Customers make calls. So they have to have something in common. And you can see here there's a field called customer ID and there's a field here called customer ID. The customer ID in the table customer is the one that uniquely identifies each customer. So a customer ID will only appear once in this table. So customer number one will only appear in this table once. And so that's the primary key. But in this table, the customer ID is not a primary key because the customer ID 1 could appear in here several times if, for example, they made a call on the date, the 1st of January, then they made a call on the 2nd of January, then they made a call on the 3rd of January, then there would be three instances of customer number 1 in here. So when we drag from customer ID to customer ID and we look here, the relationship is one to many and create one customer can make many calls. Now what I want to do is enforce referential integrity. So I'm going to either right click or double click this line and tick enforce referential integrity. Now when I do that and go OK you see these symbols. Here's the one because this is the primary key and here's the many using the infinite Greek symbol um, which is the foreign key. So this now illustrates one customer can place many calls, customer ID to customer ID. The prerequisite to that is they don't have to be called the same thing. They, this could be ID and this could be customer ID. They don't have to be called the same thing, though I highly recommend that you do um, for ease of understanding what's going on. But they do have to be the same data type. You can only connect a text field to a text field, a number field to a number field. Um, the exception is you can connect a number field to an auto number because an auto number essentially is a number. So they have to be the same data type. Enforced referential integrity means that when you go and 
put a call into this table and you say what the subject was, what the date was, what the time was, and then you choose the customer, it will race down here and check that that reference has integrity and that that customer exists in this table. And the enforce bit means that if you type a customer ID and TBL call and it goes and checks TBL customer to see if that customer exists and that customer doesn't exist, it will scream at you. That's what the enforce means. So it checks that any references you make have integrity. So you can imagine yourself when you ring a company needing support, they'll often say, can I have your account number? If you haven't rung them before, they might say, look, I just have to set you up first and then I can put this call against you or this case or this support call against you. So now I'm going to drag and create a relationship between employees and calls. Employees handle calls. So I drag employee ID to employee ID. They're both the same data type. They are both numbers. And I enforce referential integrity and create. One employee can make or handle, sorry, many calls. And so we see the one to many. Again, when a call transpires and you put the subject, the date, the time and the type and then you choose the employee, the Enforce Referential Integrity will run through this line and check that that employee exists, that that reference has integrity. And if that employee does not exist because you've done a typo, it will scream at you and say that you can't enter that employee. The second effect of Enforce Referential Integrity is that if I was to delete an employee in this table because they've since moved on, I can't. I can't delete an employee in the employee table if there are calls in the call table that relate to that employee. Um, I would simply, because we'd had the same situation where we had a call handled by an employee who doesn't exist, we'd be in the same boat. So you have to come up with more creative ways. Um, I usually just make a tick box or a yes no field that says that that employee is now de deactivated. Um, so I can keep the history of the calls for my statistics. It's the same as the customer. You can't delete a customer. Um, the enforced referential won't let you. Because if you delete the customer, you'll suddenly have all these calls to a customer that no longer exists. Again, we usually make a tick box that says that they are no longer a customer, deactivate them, things like that. So Enforce Referential Integrity ensures that there is integrity between the references between two tables. The other option you've got is if I double click customer, for example, this line, is Cascade Update and Cascade Delete. I'll tick both of those and OK. The customer ID field in the table customer is in fact a text field. And if I was to change that customer ID in this field, I really want it to cascade through all the related tables and change the customer ID in the related tables. So if there's any chance that you're going to change an ID, not normally if it's an auto number, but if it's a manual number or a text field, then you really need to have cascade update, that it cascades through to all the related tables and updates the, the customer ID in the related tables. Cascade delete means that if I delete this customer, it will cascade through all the related tables and delete that record from the related tables as well. So if that customer perhaps becomes deceased and I delete that customer, it will actually cascade through the related tables and delete those records relating to that customer from the other tables. And so those two are worth considering depending on the database. If you want to print the relationships, you can create a relationships report. And here it is here. And then I can save that report, hitting the save button up in the quick access toolbar, and just call it RPT for report and relationships. And when I hit OK, there's my report there. And I've created a report that reflects the relationships in this database. And I can hit close. It's worth every time you open a database to go and look at the relationships. So I'm just going to close the relationships in the call tracking database. I'm going to jump back to a database we had opened earlier, which was Northwind, and here it is here. I want to look at the relationships in the Northwind database. So I go to Database Tools and I go to Relationships. 
and these are the relationships in this database. So if somebody sends me a database that they're having problems with, one of the first things I'll do, because I didn't design it, is open the database and go to um, the relationships button and look at the relationships because it tells me what tables are in this database, what fields are in each table, who the primary keys are, and what the relationships are. And it really does try and help you understand a database uh, really quickly. When I look at this particular relationships window, I can see customer ID to customer ID. One customer places many orders. Here I can see employee ID and in the orders table employee ID. So we have a relationship. One employee handles many orders. Here we have shippers and each shipper is identified by shipper ID but the field's called ship via in the orders table, which proves the point I was saying earlier. They don't have to be the same name, but they have to be the same data type. But I would have called this shipper ID myself personally. But one shipper ships out many orders. Coming over to this side, supplier. Every supplier has an ID. One supplier supplies many products. Supplier ID to supplier ID. Here we have categories like seafood or beverages or dairy. One category, category ID, has many products. Many products belong to a category. So you'll have many products in the category confections. And then you have in the middle here order details. One order number has many details. One order number can be for this product, this price, this quantity, then another product, another price, another quantity, another product, another price, another quantity. One order can have many details, and the order details, one product, can be part of many order details. Um, so here's a relationships diagram, um, and this is what they call a relational database. So we are now in a position, because we have got relationships, we are now in a position to create queries where we can query one or more tables and pull together information from these tables. So for example, I'm now in a position where I could create a query that says, give me all the customers from the city London who have placed orders for the month of August that were handled by the employee, Nancy. Those sorts of questions. So that's why we relate um, tables.